Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Burge Erichelian, who's an area sales manager with CMG Home Loans, and we'll be talking about unique loan options for investors. Burge, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Mike. It's great to be back again. Thank you, you so know, much. I, I always always love hearing the word unique because it's like, okay, anybody can do the plain vanilla easy ones, you know, come one, come all and fill out the form and give us your down payment. And here's your loan. But talk to us a little bit about some of the unique programs that you guys have, because I, I know with a real estate investor, um, when you start getting into owning u- maybe even unique properties or multiple properties, maybe conventional lending can have some limitations. So what is it that you guys are doing to serve investors? Great. Yeah, absolutely. So just a few options. Like, So you have your normal conventional loan, fully income. They have their limitations of how many loans you're allowed to have as an investor. CMG and myself, we have three unique products. One is the PLS, which is very similar to a conventional, but we hold on to this investment loan. We allow you to get as many properties as you want. So you can go over 10 and it has a better interest rate and pricing than the conventional version of it. We also have what's well, called let the- me, uh, Let yeah. me ask you a question on that. What does yeah. PLS stand for? It's a product limited supply of, it's like okay. our unique product. You're like your own little in-house product. Well, yes. I always like to use word pictures and I literally was uh, talking to someone earlier today and I said, wow, it sounds like you're like the guide going through the jungle, swinging the machete, you know, helping people get through and navigate through. And he goes, oh my word, I use that example all the time. So I love using examples, but I, I want to use the one of like the seesaw. Well, if you push down on one side, the other side goes up. So what you just said to me is, okay, if you, you have too many properties that conventional can't approve you, we can do it. But you're going to pay a higher rate, but you're saying it's going to be a even lower. It's lower rate. Yeah, this one's unique. Just we own, we're like the only one that has it, uh, and we give a better rate than the uh, than the conventional counterpart. And I actually I've closed about twelve of these just in the last month and a half since I started with CMG, as all my investors really like this product. I guess because yeah. when you get a like you know you're going to have someone that goes oh I want to try my hand at invest uh, investment property so then you let me get to do an investment loan but you get some of the seasoned professional investors that are having 5 10 15 20 properties they're going to run into those limitations like you mentioned conventional caps you at whatever 10 if yeah. you can now come in and help them get past that and the rates better that's yep. lights out. So it then is, are there any other limitations with that um, um, uh, type of loan? Like you can have more than 10, but you can have more than whatever. Do they limit it at all? No, no. But the main thing is your income still has to work out in the end. Sure. So income from the properties, your tax returns, whether you're working or not, they take all that into account. Oh, yeah. And whereas some other loan types do not for yeah, investors. You still have to qualify for it. Yes. You can have 20 Yes. 30, you know, so that's good. Okay. So what was uh, the other one that you wanted to um, uh, talk about? Yeah. So we also have the DSCR loan, which is the debt service coverage ratio. And that product doesn't require any, uh, oh, what is that? Income. Sorry. Any income. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and basically what that one does is the property that you choose, the payment has to kind of cor- correspond with the uh, rent. So if those work out equally together, you qualify. You, for a purchase, you need 20% down. Or if you want to do a cash out refinance, you can go up to 75% on these. And sometimes it's 70, will give you a little better rate, but you can still do a cash out if you completely own the property and don't want to show income. So on a purchase, the the rent that you're getting ready to charge the people you're going to, you know, rent it to, that needs to cover the amount of the mortgage. Now, yeah. let's say that, the, you know, use round figures, $1,000. Let's say that you're going to rent the property for $1,000. Is there a percentage then that the underwriter will say, okay, we're only going to use 75% of that 1000 So if your mortgage payment is 750 then that's going to work out fine. Do they do a percentage like that? 
No, so, well, with conventional, they would do something similar, but DSCR yeah. works a little differently. So they'll go as low as 0.75. So if it's a thousand dollars and your rent is seven fifty, they'll still do the loan. Yeah. Uh, but they don't do the seventy five percent. They do a one to one ratio, and most lenders want to see it at one or one point one. But some do go as low as 0.75 and just increase the rate a little bit. But at least you'll own the property, yeah. and then you can worry about refinancing or getting into a different loan, you know, after. But these are all thirty year fixed. Well, with if you're an investor getting ready to buy a property, you probably yourself want to make sure the rent's more than that ratio anyway. You do. You do. You know, so it's like <laughs> that's not asking for too much, you know. You, no. you know, I if it's a thousand if the rent's gonna be a thousand dollars, I wanna hope that my mortgage payment is six hundred dollars. So I'm making a good spread. So that doesn't sound very um limiting to me. That sounds pretty amazing because sometimes, and, and I know that real estate investors can have a W-2 job, but sometimes you've got this entrepreneurial mindset where a business owner um, wants to go buy a bunch of investment properties. Well, now let's look at your tax returns. Well, as an entrepreneur, you might show very low uh, income. Well, with this kind yeah. of a loan product, you don't need to worry with um, the income verification because the underwriter is going to look at the rents you're getting ready to charge. That's a really Correct. that's a really good um and again that's one of your in-house programs. It is. We do have it in-house uh as well. So when both of these we've talked about is like you CMG's proprietary product in-house do, what other benefits does being quote unquote in-house provide? Like does it faster underwriting? Is it some other benefits too? Yeah, so you're right. It's all managed in-house so everything goes faster like the underwriting a review of it if we need an exception for any reason we're making that decision in-house there's companies that do dscr as well that we could third party to but generally our in-house product has a little bit better rate yeah as well because we're managing it and servicing it so that's why we were able to offer that yeah that's really good okay good well what's uh what's one of your other proprietary products So we just added, we have what's called the all-in-one loan. It's a first position HELOC, and it takes over any other mortgages you may or may not have. Uh, And we just added investment properties to this product. You can only have up to two. But what makes this product unique is that it is a first position HELOC, and they call it all-in-one because there is a checking account that's attached to the account. So for instance, if you purchase a investment property for 500,000 and you put 20% down, you have a loan amount of 400,000. So they'll give you this first position HELOC at 400,000. And then as you pay this down, your position still stays at 400,000. So over time, as you're gaining equity in the home or on your loan, you still could take money out up to 400,000. You have this checking account that helps offset interest. So what happens is say you you have 100 grand sitting in Wells Fargo making you zero basically. Yeah, really. You can essentially put that 100 grand into the checking account. You'd have full access to the money. So via check, debit card, whatever it is, you make your auto pays everything, it's a full service account. But that 100 grand or any money sitting in that account offsets the daily balance that you owe on your mortgage for the interest payment. So essentially, you're only going to pay interest on 300000 for example. Yeah. And this is a daily balance. So if you have money coming in uh, monthly, weekly, and it's going into this checking account, uh, it's, it's actually averaging it off on a daily balance as you're taking money in and out, as money grows or goes smaller. But you're so we try to make it heavy on the principal side. We want you to pay down the principal faster uh, instead of like a traditional 30-year mortgage where you'll be paying all your interest up front. Good luck paying off the principal anytime soon. Whereas the average holder of the all-in-one loan usually pays off their loan in less than 12 years. Now, that's interesting because A, a first position HELOC is unique anyway. 
Yes, even on an owner occupied, because I can tell you that I tr in the house that I'm in right now, I had a um a loan with a large, large, large bank, a he first mortgage HELOC, and and you know the draw period is like ten years, so it, it was approaching ten years. This was about a year and a half ago, and I was like, oh, let me just go refresh it because I want to keep the ten year draw because I want to use it if and when I ever needed it. And I call them back up, they're like, yeah, we don't do them anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> so ah. it, they're hard to find anyway as first position HELOCs. But to be able to have one on an investment property is huge. Secondly, the strategy you're describing to me, you know, working with a lot of financial planners, I think will be really interested in, in hearing about this because when, when you put the pencil to like numbers and you go, okay, whatever bank out there that you have your, in this example, hundred thousand with you, you got it sitting, you know, earning very, very low money and you don't have it in the market, you know, cause you want it in a liquid account, like a savings account for whatever your reason is, why not park it? in this product and in reality that's offsetting whatever the interest rate is on that investment property loan so you're getting more bang for your buck but then what if you're like oh i need thirty thousand for home improvements you got it you got it yeah so even if say you have a two million dollar property and you take an say you got a five hundred thousand dollar balance on your current 30-year fixed you do you could take this out up to like 70 percent for example or just say we could do a million dollar loan. Now you have, you refinanced your 500,000, you have access to another 500,000. So money that's sitting in this, you could pull it out for use of, you know, stocks, bonds, et cetera, okay. investments, or, and, or you can switch. So what one of my clients right now is doing, he ended up doing something similar to this. He took out a, a million dollar line and he only owed like 300 on his home. So he's got this extra cushion, but he just cashed out some of his stocks. So he took that stock money, put it into here, yeah. and now it's offsetting the interest he owes on his home, right? And he's got access to this other 700 grand at this point that him and his you know, financial advisor is looking at deploying yeah. as soon as there's, I don't know if a there's going to be a market crash or whatever, but yeah, the whatever. good opportunity, they're going to take and dump in and, and go full board on some stocks like Tesla and, and whatnot. Well, and staying liquid is important in a, in a retirement plan. Well, what you're yeah. describing is, you know, as liquid as possible, because if you ever needed it, you know, you just pull it right back out. And another thing Correct. is we're talking about doing this all-in-one loan for investment properties. Well, in the example you just gave where the guy got a million dollars and paid off his you know, underlying first mortgage and he's got a big cushion. What if he's out there with his real estate um, advisor going, ooh, we found this other opportunity. Well, now... It may, may, uh, maybe I'm uh, off base, so correct me if I'm wrong, but now your your client becomes a cash buyer. They don't need to go you know, put an offer in on the next investment property and say, okay, we need 45 days to – they can write a check off of their all-in-one loan and yes. buy that next property as cash, and that puts them in a much better position to maybe get chosen if it's a hot uh, property. Yeah, they can use it. They can basically write a check to buy a property in cash. And if they need that money back, we can come in and well, the, like, other property the next day, we can do what's called a delayed refinance, which gives you a cash out up to 75% of the cash you just paid on a property. And it would still be counted like a purchase loan almost when it comes to yeah. the terms instead of a cash out. And, and see, in that scenario, you then are like a mover and a shaker. Like, like as an example, we were talking about how some people that have more than 10 properties need your other loan where it can be more, you know, your in-house loan. This now is really powerful because if you have an investor that's got some of that cushion and they want to buy another property and another property, they might benefit a lot from being, write that check out of the cushion. Mm -hmm. They're the cash buyer, but then they still want that cushion, you know, because now here's this other property they bought you know, for cash in reality, because they pulled it off of their um, uh, all-in-one loan. Well, let's go ahead and open up that equity and open up that cushion. And you just do the all-in-one loan on the new property they just got. Well, in reality, um, if you're able to have that little, you know, window of opportunity where your underwriters treat it like a delayed uh, purchase, you get the benefit of being that quick cash buyer. But then we're going to put that all-in-one on the new property as well. And now you just keep your options open. Yeah. Yes.
Yeah, I like to look at myself sometimes as like a personal wealth advisor. You know, 90% of the millionaires in U- the United States or in the world actually are made through real estate. And I think when people are working with the right team, they start to understand that and they're driven to want to do it because they understand what we can offer them. Some people just buy a house and think this is my traditional 30 year mortgage is all I can do. And they sit back and they work for the rest of their life and that's it. Whereas investors are different. They a hundred percent. And you know, I think uh, people, you said the word understand, and that's really powerful because people need to be educated. And I'll tell you that I was talking to someone a few months ago and they were saying, um, Oh yeah, my house is uh, free and clear. And I can, you know, I can just walk in and get a hundred thousand dollars anytime. I'm like, Oh, you have a line of credit in your house. They're like, no. I said, so you don't have any mortgage at all. No, not at all. It's paid off. I said, you you have to go beg the bank for accessing your own home equity. You got to pay money for closing call. This yep. is not an easy process. So people don't understand. You know, they think I've worked hard to pay my house off. Good. Well, get that line of credit on there. Well, in this scenario, you could have this first mortgage. HELOC, home equity line of credit, one loan, um, and start paying down extra if you wanted to pay down extra. But then what if you're like, oh, I need to reaccess it. You just write a check. Yeah. It keeps yeah. Your, your options open. It keeps you flexible. And it could be a lot of opportunities. It could be an investment opportunity for real estate. Um, and, and too many times, I think, again, markets change. But there's there might be something where some you know real estate partner that you're working with goes, look, this thing is not even on the market yet. I just heard about it from my buddy. Come by and take a look at it. And if you're that cash buyer, Boy, you're you right. might you might be the one getting it, whereas it might be a fight if you yes. let it go on the market. So I th- I just think that the, this one product here has so much potential. It does. I I personally have been selling it to a lot of my investors and growing just through that. Now let's think about the ten number that you were talking about with um. So so how many of these all in ones can you have? Can you have ten you know investment properties with this on there? What's the cap that way? No, the all-in-one is capped at having two loans, and then you would go into the PLS from there. And you would just take your most valuable properties, you know, under the all-in-one loan, because we can go up to a million on investment, and I believe it's like three million on uh, primary, with exceptions if you need more. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always limits, so you yeah, take, there's you, always you know, limits. maximize the benefit of this all in one for the two, and then you go into your uh, PLS product for the one, you know, the other ones are, and I think that that's, you know, you you hear so much about, you know, um, the conventional and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and boy, there is so many regulations, but when you can work with an in-house product like this, boy, it just it just takes yeah. those limitations right off. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that want to become investors need to learn too. Like, I mean, we've been ingrained since school, like debt is bad, you know, pay off your house, do this, but leverage is how money is being made hand over fist. So when you have a paid off, say primary home, and you're just going to work every day and not thinking about how you can make more money, the leverage of that is exponential. And they're not taking advantage of it because no one's showing them or telling them or offering advice. Whereas when they work with the right team, you know, that advice is given to them and then they understand how to, you know, game the system basically. Okay. And, so, but ga- game it, but in a legal ethical way. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well, you're leveraging leverage. your money, you know, yeah, yeah, it's all leverage, right? All leverage. So let's, let's uh, drill in a little bit deeper here. Um, when you talk about an investment property and the all-in-one, as an example, um, you can only have two of these. Well, how can you leverage these two? So I wonder, would this be available for like a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex? Correct. It would be. So that's leverage because now you can get two of these all-in-ones <laughs> and buy two fourplexes and now you have eight units. Yes, correct. Uh, as long as you're up to a million on the loan amount. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah exactly. Yeah. But you could buy uh what? Uh a million dollar fourplex and another million dollar fourplex. Mm-hmm. And now you got eight units. Correct. And what's the cash flow there? Should be good. You know, should be good. If, you, if you've done it the right way, if you've done it right. But I, I guess that's kind of where I'm going with it is this, you know, don't let yourself hear like, oh, there's only two. Well, then if you're an investor and you're a seasoned investor, um, why not look at fourplexes? 
You know, like I literally was today talking to um, a guy that runs like a private equity fund and he he finds these deals for people that are like 300 unit storage facilities. Oh, yeah. Nice. You know, th- things like that. And I know I know that's a whole different type of a product than or, or a um, property than what you have. But he he says, you know, here's the deal. If it's 200 unit apartment building, it's just a few more zeros or a few more units. But that's what we're talking about here. If you're an investor looking for a single family residence to rent out to one person, okay, that's fine. But why not do a fourplex and rent it to four people? Yeah. And use the all in one for that property as long as it's, you know, the, the line can be one million. So what are some of the ways that you're seeing your investors? You said you've done ten or twelve of these recently. What are some of the ways that they're um buying the investment properties? So I had one one individual, he took a HELOC on his, actually not the first position HELOC, he went with a second mm-hmm. um, on his primary, uh, of f- like 500000 and then he used that money to go buy seven more properties using my PLS loan. But I also got him the HELOC. He just didn't want uh, the all-in-one because his first position on his yeah. home was, good, was at like right. two and a half, which yeah, I right, got right. him anyway. Uh, you know, when the rates were low, I slid him in and <laughs> he was so happy about the two point, I don't know, 2.65 or something. Yeah, I got right. him. But so now, yeah. So I've through, you know, teaching and kind of understanding and I brought the deal to him as well. And uh, he was able to leverage his home, go buy more properties. And he's like on track now. He's all excited and wants to get another three and then, you know, eventually get to a hundred is what he says, Good but night. which is insane. But at the same time, it makes sense because when he in 10 years or 20 years, he'll be done, you know, and then he's creating generational wealth because now his children have stuff that they're going to inherit and they'll be off in a better position. And we also, you know, you think about the tax deductibility of real estate uh, and we won't get into numbers because talk to your CPA, but there's the benefit of owning real estate for the tax deduction. There's the benefit of owning real estate for the cash flow, because hopefully in this example, this guy is having some nice cash flow, but then how about also, hopefully properties are going to over time, get more and more in value. Maybe they'll dip a little here and there, but over time they'll increase in value. So, so now you talk about generational wealth. If you have the horizon of many years, you know, 10, 20, 30 years for your family, your legacy. So yes. now you are getting the tax benefit of write offs now. You are getting the cash flow benefit now. But as that loan is paid down and paid off and the value goes up, boy, what gift are you giving of a legacy to your family with a free and clear rental property that they're just getting pure cash flow profit on? Yeah, this, I mean, he's a W 2. Uh, employee. So he's never been able to really write off anything. He had like yeah. a little bit with his uh, home interest and stuff like yeah. that. The minute he added these properties, man, it opened up the floodgates where, yeah. you know, his $400,000 a year income, he can drop it to almost like 200 or less just yeah. because of all the different strategies available, you know, by working with the right accountant and CPA, of course. Uh, but it works out. You yeah, know, let's, it's a team let's, effort. Let's, uh, let's wrap up with this thought. Yeah. It's it's not him Googling around going, oh, I'm going to figure this. Who in the world would have thought you could do what we're talking about here? So you need the mortgage professional like yourself. You need a CPA to help out. Good. Here, that's someone on your team. You need the financial professional. You need a real estate professional. So Correct. All of these people in this team need to be working together for the good of the client. And that's where Burge comes in to go, hey, <laughs> I'll work with your team, and I'll bet you your team doesn't have access to products like this. And I think this is just spectacular. And Thank you. Yes. And just a quick note, too, there is other things like the bridge loans, the fix and flips, and uh, the in- interest only for one year, just the quick loans like that, yeah. too, to get property. So all that's you know part of our strategy as well if needed. Yes. Awesome. Well, yeah. when, you, when you're when you thinking about um, trying to look into uh, um, maybe someone listening to this is like, oh man, I was turned down or it's really difficult because I own this many properties. This might be an option for me. So what's the best way that someone can learn more and reach out and connect with you, Birch? Yeah. The best way to contact me is you can visit my website at www.theburge.com. That's berj.com or just call my cell directly 858-449-0514.
Awesome. Well, Birch, thank you so much for coming back on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me again. Thanks a lot, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.